next on Newsmax Prime. Keith, don't let them break the windows. Come on out the car. Keith, don't do it. Keith, get out the car. Keith, Keith, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Keith, 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 don't you do it. Dramatic cell phone video of the fatal confrontation between Keith Scott and the Charlotte police. Will this calm the city or stoke more violence? Then, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have a Monday night date to debate. Dick Morris details the five things Trump must do for a decisive debate victory. Plus, the popular feature on Newsmax.com returns here to Newsmax TV. The Wire. And some of the stories that appear prompt discussion tonight with Miranda Kahn and Ed Berliner. All that and more as Newsmax Prime starts right now. Good evening and welcome to this Friday night edition of Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Of prime interest tonight... The continuing strife in Charlotte. The way I see it, some of the shouting has subsided, some of the violence has abated, but conflicting narratives display the narrow-mindedness from a pair of political factions, and they could kindle new political prairie fires for both major parties. Now, you and I just heard and watched that dramatic cell phone video that began the broadcast, and it certainly leaves me to believe that Mr. Scott had a gun and the Charlotte cops shot him after he failed to follow their commands. Perhaps that's why Charlotte NAACP President Corrine Mack made the incredible claim on CNN yesterday that it really didn't matter if Mr. Mr. Scott had a gun. Check this out. But in my mind and in most of the community's mind, it really doesn't matter if he had a gun. At the end of the day, we have the right under the Second Amendment to carry here in North Carolina. And uh, their responsibility was to engage him in a more de-escalated way, uh, find out if he had a permit for his gun, and allow him to go on his merry way, and, and he would still be living today. Ms. Mack employs logic that is profoundly amiss. The fact is, Mr. Scott was a convicted felon, so it would be illegal for him to possess a firearm. Moreover, Ms. Mack's assertion that somehow the police could de-escalate the confrontation is likewise flawed. When confronted with deadly force, cops cannot become instant therapists. They must neutralize the threat. On the other side of the debate, get ready to see five seconds of video that may cost Congressman Robert Pittenger at the polls this November. The grievance in their mind is uh, the, the, the animus, the anger. They hate white people because white people are successful and they're not. And now, to be fair to the congressman, the brevity of that soundbite may not give us the full context of his remarks, but it is worth noting that Donald Trump has not made such a stark assertion. In fact, last night in a Pennsylvania campaign speech, Mr. Trump went out of his way to note that the vast majority of African Americans in Charlotte and elsewhere want no part of violence, but do seek economic and educational opportunities. Donald Trump says he is the candidate who can make that happen. And it could encourage more black voters to cast a ballot for Mr. Trump. And if he were able to garner 20% of the African-American vote, that could very well put him in the White House. At least, that's the way I see it. While millions of Americans make plans to tune in to Monday night's debate, Charlotte will still be on their minds. So Trump and Clinton will reference the riots there in order to make their respective cases as to why they should end up in the White House. Miranda Kahn has more. J.D., it's crunch time now for both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. With the first presidential debate just a week and away, both decided to take time off the campaign trail in order to prepare. And who could blame them with what's expected to be a record audience? But before that break, they weighed in on the situation in Charlotte, North Carolina, giving a possible sneak peek of what we can expect Monday. Call it the calm after the storm. For two days, violence and unrest hammered down on the city of Charlotte. But last night... This is a peaceful protest. Nobody wants anything. While police continued to march down the streets of Charlotte, some wearing riot gear... Our street! Our street! 
and the National Guard stood its ground, steering away the unruly. Donald Trump made it clear he wants voters to see him as a law and order candidate. The rioting in our streets is a threat to all peaceful citizens, and it must be ended and ended now. While at the same time making an appeal to minorities who often lean left. Who's looking out for them? Hillary Clinton, as have other Democrats, rely strongly on minorities for their support. We need to come together, work together, white, black, Latino, Asian, all of us. The main victims of these violent demonstrations our law-abiding African Americans. But Donald Trump may be trying to change that trend with this latest appeal. I am with you and I will fight for you, I promise. And a new McClatchy Maris poll shows Hillary Clinton's lead now over Donald Trump has dwindled. Take a look, she's currently leading him by just six points, 45 to 39 percent. But as we all know, J.D., a lot can change even after just one debate. Back to you. Indeed it can. And for more on all of this, we're pleased to be joined by Newsmax TV political analyst and presidential strategist Dick Morris. Dick, of course, is the New York Times best-selling author of the book Armageddon, How Trump Can Beat Hillary. Also joining us now, former New York Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick. Bernie also served as the interim minister of the interior in Iraq. He likewise has authored a great book entitled From Jailer to jail. Uh, Donald Trump continues to rise in the polls, gentlemen, prompting this curious comment from Hillary Clinton. Take a look. Now, having said all this, why aren't I 50 points ahead, you might ask? <laughs> well, when you hear that, Dick Morris, with that vocal timber looking into a, into a camera, what's the deal with Hillary? First of all, I just want to welcome my friend Bernie to the show. And uh, tell people that his book, From Jailer to Jailed, is terrific. Uh, I, I read it, I uh, really couldn't put it down. Uh, it is such a memoir, and it, it details a journey that, that very few people are able to uh, recover from. And it's marvelous to see him on the show here. Well, Thanks, Bernie. Uh, I, think, I think that Trump, uh, I, I'm sorry, repeat your question, uh, please. Well, well the, the deal is Hillary gets on videotape, looking in the camera, shouting, saying, why am I not 50 points ahead? Trump said it's because she's terrible. Maybe that sets up the debate. Go ahead. It reminded me of poll briefings of Hillary. Why aren't I 50 points ahead? <laughs> she sometimes would talk to me like that. Uh, I think that the, that the problem in this race uh, is that virtually a, a large portion of the electorate, uh, probably more than a majority, dislikes both of the candidates. And uh, the difference fundamentally is that the stuff they dislike about Hillary is stuff she can't change. It's her background, her record, the emails, the Clinton Foundation and all that. The stuff they dislike about Donald Trump is largely behavioral. It's that he doesn't, he didn't come across uh, sensitive, he came across as uh, some felt bigoted, some felt uh, acerbic, uh, unpredictable, ruthless, all the things Hillary says about it. And therefore, this debate is an opportunity for Trump to cure what ails him. Because if he walks on that stage and is not deplorable and not racist and not Islamophobic and not any of the things Hillary says he is, for an hour and a half, people are going to conclude he's a pretty reasonable guy and they're going to be very interested in voting for him. So this debate is all about Donald Trump. There's almost nothing Hillary can do to improve her standing. She can't, might look sick, she might look weak, and that would be dangerous for her. But basically, this is, debate is Donald Trump's opportunity to vitiate and nullify about $150 million of negative ads Hillary's run. Bernie Carrick, let me turn to you for the law enforcement slash political perspective. In the wake of Charlotte, does Hillary have any upside in the debate the way rhetorically she has just uh, uh, seemed to attach herself to Black Lives Matter? I don't think so. And, and I think, uh, you know, I've, I've seen one uh, African-American after another come out and basically criticize her for wanting the black vote but doing nothing for it. Uh, so I think 
Um, you know, as you've seen, Donald Trump has been out there. He's meeting with the African American community. And I think he's genuine in his belief that he can help them. Um, Charlotte is a demonstration of, you know, some of the anxiety out there. But, you know, you, Charlotte also represents uh, another problem that we have, and Donald Trump is keyed on it. Um, you can't have these riots. You can't have, you know, you can question a police matter. Uh, you can question what happened in Charlotte. And given that last video, I now have a new perspective on the shooting. Um, but uh, I, I'll tell you, Trump is, is absolutely right when he says these riots have to stop and you can't be out there, uh, you know, killing and, and shooting and, and uh, torching and devastating communities. Uh, we have a criminal justice system. We should abide by it and let's let justice take its course. Fair enough, Bernie. Yeah. Listen, we really appreciate yeah. your yeah. perspective tonight. Dick, I got to get to something and time is, is tight on us here. And that is the article you wrote for our parent website, Newsmax.com, The Five Things Trump Must Do. Can you very quickly outline them? Sure. Well, I, I was just about to add that Trump uh, said that the Tulsa shooting was the police officer's fault. And in Charlotte, he's now, in effect, saying that uh, it was the person who was shot's fault. And that shows an open-mindedness by Trump that Hillary can't match and gives him a tremendous issue in the debate. Duly noted, we got about a minute now to run through the things he really needs to keep in mind, Dick. He's got to show that he is not all of the things that Hillary accuses him of being. Secondly, he needs to make clear to people that the events, the bombing in New York, bombings in New York, uh, show the defects of permitting unlimited Muslim refugee immigration into the United States. And I just want to add, particularly while Bernie's here, that when New York City suspended its demographics unit in the police department that had successfully stopped 20 different terror attacks, it was like they told the goalie to go home for the rest of the game. And a shot got through, and the first one was that attack. Trump needs to talk about that. He needs to talk about Obamacare falling apart, and he needs to make the case that Hillary will take it one step further to government-controlled medicine. He needs to make clear that the email controversy, the secret emails, was really originated because Hillary's desire to cover up the pay-for-play nature of the Clinton Foundation transactions. And he needs to present an image to the American people where he goes after the Bernie Sanders voters. And we have to go right now, Dick. We look forward to your help on Monday night with our special, There's More Ahead.